So in this video, I want to show you how to install Postal. Um, Postal is a mail server that allows you to receive incoming email and send it to your web app or just send outgoing email and provides a nice web interface for viewing sort of delivery details and that sort of thing. So to get started, you need a nice, um, a clean server. Um, we recommend you've got at least four gig of RAM and at least two CPU cores. Um, disk space doesn't really matter, but make sure you've got enough for the operating system and for all the mail you want to store. And then you need to install Docker and Docker Compose. Now the details for how to do that or the links for how to do that are in the prerequisites page on the docs page on docs.postalserver.io. So go and look at those and install it that way. Um, and all the other things you need to do are basically in here. We're going to just go through this, this instruct these instructions together. So the first thing you need to do is clone this Git repository. Um, that says that already exists. I probably already um, created it. And then run Postal. Now Postal is a little helper script that's in that repository and allows um, us to make some of the commands a bit simpler. Basically these all just run uh, Docker commands under the hood. So Postal has uh, two dependencies that you need to worry about to start with. Yeah, MariaDB and RabbitMQ. Postal doesn't care for either of these um, where they are, what they are. It just needs connection details to connect to them. Just make sure you're using MariaDB 10.5 and um, you'll be fine. Now, the instructions provide you for running MariaDB in a Docker container. If you use that, make sure you type in a new password there for the root password. So um, something a bit more secure. We'll just leave it as that because I'm going to throw this server away later anyway. Um, and the same goes for RabbitMQ. You can install your own, but this will also create a single node RabbitMQ instance on your machine. So once they've they've finished, we'll see that they're they're both running, and we can proceed to the next step of the installation. So the next thing we need to do is create the configuration files for Postal. And there's a command called Postal Bootstrap, and then you need to provide the host name that you're going to run Postal on. In this case, postaldemo.viaduct.io. Oh, uh, we'll spell that with a T. And that will create a config file in optpostalconfigpostal.yaml. Uh, it creates a couple of other files, but we'll just worry about this one for now. And in here are all the core system settings. Now, the host name's already been inserted for you, but if you used a different database server or anything like that, you should specify that in here as well. And the other thing in here are the DNS records. Now, we just need to um, replace some of these quickly. So we'll just quickly go up here and we'll just replace uh, postal.example.com with postaldemo.viaduct.io just ready for later because we'll set up those DNS records in a little, a little bit once we've got Postal running. Once you've done that, you can proceed to the next step, which is to initialize the database. So Postal Initialize will start by downloading the Postal containers um, from, from the registry, and then it will load in the database schema into your database. So we'll just let these download, and when we're then when they're done, it'll uh, load up load up the database for us. So as you can see, it's created all the tables, which is excellent. And the next step here is to run Postal Make User, and Postal Make User will give us a little UI now, a little CLI tool to create a new user. So we'll just go and create a new user here. Um, and that will give us our initial login details for our new installation. And finally, we're at the, the, the sort of the last step for Postal is running Postal Star. And what that'll do is create uh, containers for all the components that Postal needs to run. The final thing before we can access the web interface, though, is we need to install some sort of web proxy. At this point, you can use Nginx, you can use Apache, you can use anything you want. Um, our instructions provide for using Caddy for this. so. Again, we've provided a Docker image, but you can install this however you want. Um, you just need to um, to make sure you can forward web traffic from port 443 um, to the postal server and do a bit of SSL termination. So if we have a look at postal status now, uh, we can see everything's up. And if we just run Docker PS to look at all the processes, we've got we've got Caddy running, we've got MariaDB, Rabbit, and then our uh, our postal processes as well. At this point, we can probably go to Postal Demo. Oh, that's not right. That's the wrong domain. Postal.viaduct.io. And if we go here, we can log in with the user we created. And the first thing you're going to see is um, something about creating an organization. Now, we'll come back to that in a second. But before, so before we go any further, we'll configure our, our DNS. 
If we go over to our documentation and have a look at the DNS page, it's all documented here. Now I'm going to use Catapult's DNS system for this. Um, I've already created the A and the uh, quadruple A record uh, for the actual server. And the next thing we need to do is create the SPF template record. So we'll copy that and we'll create a new record called SPF. My text record, I'll we'll paste this in. And we're just going to change these IP addresses here to match the IP addresses on our server. So there's this one here for IPv4, and we've got this one here for IPv6. We'll create that record. So the next one we need to do is create the return path. Now, this is a few records we need to create, um, and we're going to create them all at a subdomain called RP. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Um, we're going to need to need that IP. We'll do RP and we'll put the IP4 address. We'll do RP and not an alias record, we'll do an IPv6 record. And then we also need to do a um, another SPF record. And for this one, we'll do RP, TXT. We're just going to reference our, the one we just created. So we're just going to do include spf.postaldemo.viaduct.io. And then we need to generate our default DKIM record. So we're going to run this command here, which will give us this value. And then we're going to go back here and we're going to add record postal dot domain key dot rp and we'll paste that in there and then we've got our default dkim record as well so the next thing we need to do is our roots domain now the roots domain is used if you basically postal will generate a email address on this domain for all your incoming roots so as long as you configure an mx record here you can then just forward email to that that address which would be very handy so postal demo .io. And finally, this just shows us what we've got here for um, the postal configuration, but we've actually already already done that, so we won't worry about doing anything more there. So our DNS is now all, all set up, so that's all you need to do there. And that's about it. So um, if you were to connect to this, postaldemo.via.io on port 25, here's the SMTP server, which is just sitting there waiting to do something. Um, let's go and create an organization. So we'll create uh, an example org and then we'll build a mail server within that, which we'll just call test server. And then the first thing you do here is then configure a domain. Now you need to set up a domain for um, sending or receiving email. So we'll just set up example.com here. Now I can't configure any of these domains so I don't own example.com. But what I can do is I can configure a new route. I'm just going to configure a uh, test.example.com route and you can, in this options, you can choose to send it to HTTP endpoints, SMTP servers, anywhere. I'm just going to choose accept, um, and I'm going to create the route. Now, on the SMTP server, I can now sort of persuade it that we should send an email. So I'm going to send an email. Um, what have I done there? Mail to... Oh, mail from, sorry, uh, my, my mistake. Um, and we're going to send that to test at example.com. Give it some data uh, from um, Adam Kato to test at example.com. Subject This is just a test. Hello there. We'll send that in. And if we have a look in here now, this is our email. So it's come in here. You can see that it's been accepted, but not sent to any endpoints, but it could have been. You can look at some activity about what's going on, the headers that were in it, um, any spam checks that were run, the actual content of the message, um, and that's all in there. If we wanted to test an outgoing email, we can just send a, send an email out like this. If you wait a second, so this is um, this is this has actually failed, which is good, um, because our, our mail server actually has grey listing, which means this will now sit in the queue and will be retried automatically. But you can see here that um, this is what's going on, um, which is great. So you can see the same sort of same sort of details about your outgoing message that you saw for your incoming message. And as you'll you'll see, um, this will automatically um, uh, try multiple times to send the message. If you press retry again now, it'll try and do it again now. 
uh, obviously it will still fail because we haven't left it long enough but if we were to wait long enough that would eventually um, get delivered successfully so that's it that's that's postal um, I hope that's been useful if you've got any questions we've got a discussions page on our github uh, repository just go to postalserver.io and choose discussions um, and that's about it really you can also join us on slack uh, as well which is also linked to to from our repo so I hope that was useful um, and see you in the next video